Hey everyone, welcome back to the Craftsman's Guide. I'm Cameron and I'm gonna be showing you guys how to make this modular house with playable interior surprise hack. I thought that this would be the perfect way to finish off my forest scattered terrain. I've never really made a house like this before and I tried a couple different techniques and I really, really like the outcome. I think you guys are gonna like it too. All you need is a little bit of foam core, a little bit of foam, a little bit of paint, and that's all. So, let's get to it. We're gonna begin by laying out the house measurements. You can put them as big or as small as you want. Once measured and cut, you wanna make a smaller piece. This is gonna be the entrance way, so make it a little smaller than the sides. Move on to making the walls. The height of these will be determined by where you put your roof on the other pieces. And don't forget the little walls for the entrance way. Grab a coffee while you wait for your hot glue gun to heat up, and then begin to put all the pieces together. Squish them a bit so they hold nice and tight. Once that the walls are in place, move on to making the entryway. The final measurements are for the roof. This will be dependent on how wide you made your walls. I forgot about the roof overhang, so I had to go back and add a little extension. You want to size this up before gluing it down. And remember, this doesn't have to be perfect. This is a cabin, thrown together, in the woods, probably by some people who aren't trained to do so. You'll see, I regularly don't measure, I sort of just size it up and then cut it until it fits. Hopefully at this point, it resembles a house, kind of. I love having a playable interior, so I measured out the house, added about a half inch perimeter, and cut it out in foam. This will be the base. I had no idea how I wanted to do the stairs, so I tried a few things, and then just left it for later. Now that we have the base of the house, I wanted to start adding some detail, so I hand cut some of these bricks to go on the corner pieces. Once I had the size right, I went in and made a bunch. If you've got a hot wire cutter, use it, because it would be way easier than hand cutting it like this. I cut these bricks to be unique and non-uniform, because I thought it gave it a little bit of character. Then stack them one by one on the corners. When they're all finished, you'll want to move on to adding wooden beams. I eyeballed these foam beams and then cut them thin and added a wood grain with the pencil. I like the exaggerated wood grain that the pencil does, but if you want something more realistic, take to it with the wire brush to get that wood grain. And I just went around all of the roof adding these beams. Every good forest cabin needs a fireplace, so I took some stones and began to carve them. I didn't want a square chimney because that's boring, so I added some character by stacking the stones individually up, making this sort of twisted, witchy fireplace look. The wooden beams didn't give enough detail. I wanted a little more character, so I went in and started adding window sills. Same as before, just cutting some foam thin, but I went in with the pencil and pushed down the foam so it sort of made this like indented look. I use it pretty regularly in this project. Again, I didn't really have a plan, so I just started gluing pieces on until it looked pretty good. These sort of builds don't have to look a certain way, so be creative, start throwing pieces in, it'll look great. I moved on to playing with wall textures. I wanted the top half of this to be exaggerated wood planks. So I just took pieces, fit them, cut them to size, and then drew the wood grain in and glued them in place. I made sure that they were thinner than the outer beams so it had a bit of depth. When I was happy with my design, I went and fitted it around all of the top walls. It can be a little fiddly, but the look really makes it. I wanted each face of this house to be slightly unique, so I made different designs for the windows on either side. To make it a little quicker, you can do long beams like this, and then just get the pencil and really groove it so it looks like they're separate pieces. I didn't want to place individual stones for the bottom cobblestone, so I ended up cutting out sections for each wall, and then just carving in the stone texture with a pencil. You want the stones to look like they're sporadically placed and ununiform, using the pencil to push in some surfaces to give it depth. I went around the entire house and placed these panels of stone, making sure to define the grooves between them if need be. You can add an extra level of detail by getting an aluminium bowl and texturing it, then going in with the pencil and making cracks in the stone. Some bits were a little more difficult than others, but I just went brick by brick where I needed to. And now it's time for the shingles. I really don't like the look of the cardboard stack shingles because I'm awful at them. And without a hot wire cutter, it's hard to get really thin foam to make nice foam shingles. But doing my best, I cut thin pieces of foam, measured out one centimeter spaces, and put an indent. Then went in with the wire brush and textured it. 
And honestly, I was really happy with this look. I roughed up the edges and began to glue them on, bit by bit. Shingling can be a pain, and this did take a little while, but it was a really enjoyable process, and I really liked the final product. I just went layer by layer, detailing where I thought I needed it. And honestly, this was so satisfying to do. Taking a break from the house, I moved on to texturing the base. I marked out the stones, marked out the planks, lined out the fireplace, got a pencil, and widened those grooves. I finished off the shaping by adding nail holes, doing some stone texture on the fireplace area, and then adding wood grain to the planks. Then with an aluminium bowl, just rolled over all the stone to give it its texture. When that was all finished, it's time to begin painting. The Mod Podge is really important in this project because it really seals together all of those separate pieces we've added individually. I did a lot of layering for this project. I started out by using a dark grey on all of the cobble. Then, with a much lighter grey, went over those corner bricks. Then all of the wood planks with the brown base coat. For the shingles, I used a tan. Don't worry about the brightness of this, we're going to add a wash that's going to really darken it. When I was finished, I did a few fix-ups and added yellow to the windows to sort of simulate a candle light from within. And don't forget about the base. To add a layer of depth, I dry brushed over the same tan over all of the stone and wood surfaces. Then a homemade black wash made of black paint, water and dish soap, I went over all of the surfaces. Excluding the wood, which I only did select areas with. This beautiful concoction of liquid talent really gets in all the grooves and accentuates all of the details we've put in. Everything sort of blended in at this point, so I went over all of the cobblestones with a watered down blue paint. I did the same with a watered down brown paint, but over all of the surfaces and dabbed it on rather than brushed. The final coat was a light dry brushing with an off white to really just highlight those edges. We had a lot of detail in the stonework, so I wanted to do the same for the wood. I mixed up a light brown using a burnt sienna and white and just dry brushed over them all. This gave the wood a really nice aged look. The MVP of this build, which gave a lot of depth and contrast, was the moss. I spread out some PVA with a paintbrush over all the surfaces that I thought some moss would look good. Poured over the flocking, and then using my finger or a brush, I brushed off the stones so it looked like it was growing in between them. The final little bit of detail I wanted to add was a little bird's nest on one of these wooden planks. So I got some coconut husks and began to spin them around. My hot glue kept leaking and making these little blobs, so I had the idea to use them as eggs. Once the bird nest was constructed, I added it to a windowsill, painted up the eggs, and placed them in. And voila, you're finished! Thanks for watching the video, I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing, and if you make something of your own, please share it with me on Instagram, I'd love to show it to the community. While you're here, take a look at my other videos, and if you want to see something specific, leave a comment and let me know. And as always, I'll see you on the next adventure.